Hey, 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 what's up? What's up, everybody? How are ya? I'm Doc. Hey, I'm Dr. Vaughn. Can you guys hear me okay? I hope you guys can hear me okay. I hope you guys are doing amazing. I hope you guys are doing awesome. I hope you guys are having a great time. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Right? Excellent. Excellent. Um, I'm super excited to have the amazing Chris Noggle on today. We're going to talk about the money secrets. This is super important with what's happening with um, the new economy. So make sure, do me a favor real quick, just hit share, hit like, hit share, comment. That's how we get the interaction. Uh, let me say some hellos. Hi, Tess. Hi, Karen. Uh, hi, Michelle. Hi, Donna. Zlatka and Torma. Just put in the comment section, where you, are you watching from? Because I'm going to make sure uh, that, that we have a global audience for this. This is going to affect people wherever you are. You're going to want to share this. We got some great information for you today. Chris Nago is known as the money guru. Um, he's done over $50 million worth of real estate deals. He was a financial planner, all sorts of stuff. He's going, we're going to talk about some money secrets that the rich know that you and I don't know. All right. So real quick though, a couple coronavirus updates. Number one, yes, I'm going to start redoing my coronavirus of, uh, updates. The reason why is because there's a lot of shit out there that's pissing me off, right? Um, first of all, these numbers that people are throwing out is stupid. It's not accurate. You can't take the number of deaths and divide it by the number, the population and say, that's the death rate is 0.0002%. No, that's not how you do death rate. Fucker. I, I tried not to say fucker, man. I said fucker. So fucker. Um, so we're going to start doing coronavirus videos again. Um, our saving grace right now is that it's uh, summertime, so the numbers will go down. But just remember, it's going to be bad because a second wave is going to come back and it's going to be worse than the first wave. So uh, and we already see what's happening with the economic crisis. It's not going to recover. Don't believe what the stock market is like. Dr. Vaughn, stock market's recovered. Dude, trust me, it's fake. It is the definition of Trump's fake news. It's fake news. The Dow Jones is not a representation of um, our current econ economy. And and uh, I'm going to actually ask our guest that today. That might be good. So where are you watching from? <laughs> Son, love this unfiltered doctor. Thank you. All right. We got Indiana in the house. How are you guys? All right. Ontario. Oops. Did I get you? I missed Ontario. Sorry. The comment came too fast. There you go. Thank you, Andrea. Oh, look at this. England is in the house. Look at that. Renee Craig is in the house. Right. Awesome. Southwest Florida is in the house. Prepare yourself, Michelle. What's up, girl? How are you doing? Wisconsin, what's up? Thank you guys for hitting share. Appreciate that. Let's get more people in here. Awesome. Charlotte. Hey, Michigan's on fire. Michigan's on fire. Coronavirus fire. Hey, my old stomping grounds. Austin, Texas is awesome. Look at you guys. Where are you guys calling from? South Carolina's in the house. Look at all these people. Shit. Toronto. Did y'all miss me? I haven't gone live in a while. Coronavirus has pissed me off. So it's time to do it again. Brazil. Check out Brazil is in the house. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. We are worldwide, baby. Only thing that matters, Texas. Texas in the house. That's all we need to know, right? Aw. Oh, Penny. I missed you too. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, Massachusetts. Stay safe, man. It is. It is bad. All right. Let's get started. Hey guys, Dr. Vong here. I'm world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books, but you knew that. And <laughs> I'm super excited to have my special guest, my very good friend, Mr. Chris Noggle, on with us today. Mr. Chris Noggle um, is a former professional snowboarder, believe it or not. Yes, he is. And um, at a very young age, when he was still a teenager, started a, a chain of uh, T-shirts, uh, snowboard shops and stores, uh, very entrepreneurial, eventually uh, got into the financial services uh, sector. And then uh, he started doing real estate. He had a TV show on HGTV. Um, that you can still watch called Risky Builders. 
check that out. Um, and now he's here to share with us some secrets of the rich money secrets of the rich that they know that we don't know. He's handled over $50 million, million dollars in real estate. And now he's known as America's number one money guru, my good friend, Mr. Chris Nogo. What is going on, everybody? Excited to be back on the show. Man, super excited to have you here. Uh, so last time you were here, you offered um, free copies of your book. Can you kind of hold those up? So if people are still interested, we can still get you copies of this a little bit later. Um, but thank you guys for sharing the video. Please hit share for us. We'll get a lot of people in on this feed for Mr. Chris Nagel. So um, in my introduction, I said that uh, the Dow Jones is not a reflection of our current economy. Because a lot of people are sitting there and saying, Dr. Fung, the, you know, the Dow Jones has recovered and everything's all good. Can you explain what the Dow Jones is for the average person watching? Dow Jones is just a measure of the overall index and the overall markets. There's a Dow Jones and the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know of the S&P 500 as the 500 largest stocks, companies like Apple, companies like Amazon. You know, all the big ones are in the S&P 500. The Dow Jones is 100 stocks. So it, it basically just, you know, measures the entire markets. But, you know, we, we have. So I was just... It's kind of funny as you said that. I don't know. Let's see. I got to get this over here. I was just going to draw this. This is 2008 and this is 2020. And mm -hmm. I'm hearing that a lot too. Tons of people are like, but yeah, Chris, hold on a second. We were going down, but now we bounce, bounce back up. So mm -hmm. this is where we're at now, May 24th. And everybody thinks that we're just going to keep on going up. Well, we could talk about that. So you don't think it's going up, right? Uh, no, <laughs> no, it is absolutely not going up. This is where we're going, folks. See, you gotta, you gotta look at the facts and the facts don't lie. The facts are very simple. Number one, what are unemployment numbers? You know, how many people are unemployed right now? A whole lot, right? Jobless claims keep going up. These are facts, folks. These are set facts. Corona's not gone, is it? I mean, some states are going back to work, but the coronavirus is not gone. There is no vaccine. So there's no vaccine yet. So therefore, you know, like you mentioned, it's nice. Even in Buffalo right now, it's 70 degrees out. Can you guys believe that? Normally, like it, it snows pretty much right up through June, but uh, it's warm. So Corona is still there. How about uh, bankruptcies? You're not hearing a lot about bankruptcies right now, are you? You don't hear the... Um, the, the news talking a lot about bankruptcies, but you know what? Tons of companies and tons of individuals are already filing for bankruptcy. The uh, numbers aren't out yet. Hertz just declared for bankruptcy this week. Yeah. I, there's a ton of companies. JC Penney's just the other day, but you guys would be like, yeah, but JC Penney's was on their way out. Yeah. But wait till you start seeing the list of companies that are going to file for bankruptcy. You just haven't seen it yet. See, we are too new into this. What you don't realize is it was only a couple months ago when this really started right? It started in March. So in 2000, so let's just put February, we hit all time highs in the markets, but it took us 11 years to get there. Now I could have told just about any person that asked me that the market was going to go down. Matter of fact, I did podcasts that you can watch on chrisnoggle.com that predicted this market fallout because it's very simple. It's a cyclical cycle. We were in 11 years of a seven to 10 year cycle. So if you're in, in a 11th year of a seven to 10 year cycle, where do you think it's going to go? It can't keep going up. I mean, it's kind of silly, but there we are. Here we are down. But now we hit this point where the market's bouncing up and it's bouncing up on speculation. Sorry, these yeah, words every, are long. Every time they announce like some federal uh, give back or whatever stimulus package, it seems to cause a recovery. But you say that the stimulus packages or like an artificial inflation. Can you talk about that real quick? Yeah, the stimulus package is really, it's a complete artificial inflation or artificial, it's its not even real. I mean, the money that they're printing right now, the 2 trillion that they already, it's actually more than 2 trillion, but they just printed. Now they're talking about printing another $3 trillion. That's 5 trillion. Measure that to 2008. You remember how bad 2008 and 2009 was? They printed less than they are this time. But every single time they print money, these dollars that they're printing that we think are worth, like this is, this is our big thing that we think is worth everything. Every single dollar that they print to bail this out decreases your current 
dollars. So if your current dollar is worth one dollar, well, tomorrow it's worth less. The next day it's worth less. But it's through this thing called inflation. And, and you all know what inflation is. So I'm not going to explain that. But inflation is basically why does a car cost more next year than this year? Why is it that a gallon of milk costs more than it did before the virus started? All these things, you measure them. You drew a car like you're in third grade. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a pretty good artist, but I'm, I'm doing it backwards and sideways here. So <laughs> you guys like my car? <laughs> yeah, we, we could even put a G-Wagon. <laughs> but anyway, whatever it is, gallon of milk. Dude, a Ford pickup truck is 50 grand. Alcohol. How can you? How can you? How can the average person afford a fifty thousand dollar truck? They can't. That's where they finance it. And you know, one of the good things, uh, Doc, is today I literally have slides where I'm going to show every single one of your viewers how they can get every single dollar back for every car they ever buy. Uh, ever no, that's like no, that's wizardry stuff. It's not. It's really simple. It's just that's changing wizardry. changing one thing. But I mean, like this whole thing, what you're seeing right now, this this whole thing, this is a trick, folks. This is the market makers. This is the, the giant institutions, the hedge funds. They're driving the market up and politics. Don't you think for one second that this little drive up that you've been seeing doesn't have anything to do with politics? We are in an election year. And do you know what happens during an election year? Absolutely nothing makes sense. So let me give you an example. I trade every single day. Matter of fact, I have an entire trading platform called the 1010 Trading Program. But I, I mentor and teach people how to trade the markets. And last, not, I'm sorry, not last week. I had a baby last week, the week before. I don't even know what day of the week it is anymore. But <laughs> the week before we were trading, right? There was one day, and I might get the numbers wrong, but the market, I believe, opened down 300 or 400 points. It opened down 300 to $400. So I can make a lot of money, and I can teach people how to make a lot of money when the market goes down. By the afternoon... The market had swung 700 points and was positive, I believe, 300 points. Wow. Do you remember that day last week? Mm -hmm. And then if you scrolled through the news, I want you to try to find me one reason why the market swung that way. The only thing I could find is, oh, banks, banks had surprising earnings and banks you know, turned the market. Does that not scare you that a market turns 700 points in one day, opens down that heavy and closes up that high? And there was not really one justifiable factual reason for that. I mean, it wasn't like the government, you know, issued everybody another $2,000 check. It wasn't like the government bailed out the airlines. No, 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 no news, Just nothing for really. So let me go back to this idea about, the, about this inflation, because what you said, um, I want to reset it for people. So when they, when they print the $2 trillion, let's say I have a thousand dollars in the bank and my savings account. Mm -hmm. So when they, to print the $2 trillion, it, there has to be a, a cost transfer somewhere, right? Because you, 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 they print it out of thin air, but there has to be a cost for that. And the way they pay for it is actually my $1,000 that's in my bank is now only worth 900 bucks or something like that. Yeah. So take a look at this. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but this says they printed $2 trillion. Okay. That $2 trillion. Remember, we're not on a gold standard anymore. Do you right. remember the days where like our dollars were measured with gold at Fort Knox? Those were, that was real valuation. You had a tangible asset that valued the dollar. Just that's why I like real estate so much. There's a tangible asset that gives me valuation, right? But now money, fiat money, as they would call it, is, has no value except for the value that we give it. So because the US dollar is the main currency that oil is traded, our dollar holds some serious weight, but there is no backing for our dollar. So when they print $2 trillion, what do they do? They, they just trade IOUs, okay? Mm -hmm. And it, all of you know what an IOU is, right? It's just IOU money. So yeah. the, 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 the Federal Reserve basically prints a whole bunch of IOU, or the government gives a whole bunch of IOUs for a whole bunch of exchange of money. And oh. you guys don't even really think that those printing presses, I know a lot of people like have this visual idea that there's printing presses running printing money. Oh no. no. I want you to grab your fingers and I want you to type in $2 trillion in your computer and I want you, you, want you to hit enter and send it to somebody. 
You just did exactly what the government does. And then there's an exchange of bonds or IOUs that exchanges. So it's a balance sheet transfer. But here's the scariest part that you don't maybe understand. You, you understand inflation. You understand that milk costs more, that cars cost more, that everything costs more the further we go down, which is why I'm always saying you need to get control of your money because your current dollars today are worth the most. Your dollars today will never be worth more than they are today. So if that's the case, once they tr print $2 trillion and it's just you know, money out of air, just that enter button, where does that money actually get its value? Well, it gets its value from our current dollars, the dollars in circulation Look at that today. Money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, my savings. They, so everybody knows and hates taxes, right? There's two certainties in death or in life, death and taxes. and taxes. And we all hate taxes. And we know taxes always go up. But what we don't know about are the hidden taxes. Inflation is a tax. Don't get it wrong. Don't think it's anything else. Inflation mm -hmm. is a hidden tax. Mm -hmm. So when they print $2 trillion, that drives inflation up. But it takes time and people don't really realize it. They're just like, well, it costs more to make a gallon of milk. It costs more to knit a shirt. It costs more to make a car. No, it just takes more of these dollars to buy that car. That's all that's happening. And we, this is happening right under your nose. So the Fed prints all this money. And I'm like, woohoo, I got my $2,500 check or my $1,200 check or whatever you received. Great. You don't even understand the long-term impact that that's going to have because our dollars just went way down in value by doing that. And mm -hmm. just look back in history, folks. Like if you want to learn how this stuff works, it's really easy. Like you don't need a guy like me to teach you this. Just read a book like The Creature from Jekyll Island or Jekyll Island. Like mm -hmm. you, you can learn this stuff. But a lot of people just want to just kind of ignore it because it, the truth hurts and it's scary. But that's right. exactly what just happened. Well, that's a good way to get around to your presentation, man. Like, oh, yeah. You came prepared today to show us how do we get what's the secrets of the rich. man? we want to know. My people want to know what you know that we don't know that, oh, you, know that you don't know that you know. I've got something awesome for you guys today. So what you have to do is you have to really look back in history and, and really understand a few things. And what, what I was, it was brought to my attention in 2014 by somebody that I borrowed a lot of money from, a very wealthy individual. And he started telling me what he was doing with money. And I remember sitting at that cheesecake factory in Salt Lake City listening to him explain this. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm an advisor. Remember, I, I was 14 years deep into a high level advisory practice. And I'm listening to him tell me about this thing. And I'm sitting there in disbelief. And I'm like, no way, Mike, that doesn't exist. Uh, you're, I, I don't know who's, you know, floating all this knowledge to you and all this stuff, but they're, they're, you know, painting this big picture of a uh, la la land, white unicorns and all sorts of stuff. And he says, he looks at me and he says, Chris, I'm not telling you a story. This is what I'm doing. This is what I've been doing. And you know that money I just lent you for that real estate deal? This is where it came from, man. Research it. Call this guy Brent and learn about this because I was this big advisor and I thought I knew what I didn't know. And I was literally sitting there saying, this sounds too good to be true and it doesn't exist. But what I found out is I went back in time and I looked back to the Rockefellers, the mm -hmm. JP Morgans, the Morgan Stanleys, the wealthiest people of their time. And what had happened is back, let's just talk the Rockefellers, back during their time, they had so much money, but they, they had so much money and all they could do is put their money in banks. And if you understand banks, it would scare you. And back then, banks scared the Rockefellers and everybody else too. They didn't trust banks. So they wanted to find a different way to create a different place to store their money where it was safer, where they had control of it. When you have one like the Rockefellers and you have this huge amount of money, it doesn't make any sense to say, hey, here's my money, take it and you control it. No, they wanted to create their own banking system, but they didn't believe in the fractional lending system. They built, well, they, they did, but they, they were making money on that. They didn't want their own money where they were telling everybody else to put money. So it, it's, it's a twisted story, but get to the, the meat and potatoes is what they did is they found the strongest financial institutions in the world back then and still to today or still today were not banks. They certainly weren't banks. They were ginormous, mutually owned insurance companies. So mm -hmm. the Rockefellers, what they did is they found a way to create a banking system 
not just any banking system, maybe the world's greatest banking system, but they didn't do it at banks. They did it with mutually owned insurance companies and they did it through an instrument, a vehicle, because that's all it is, called whole life insurance. Now, every time I say that, that's where everybody kind of gets glazed over like, oh my God, here we go. We're going to hear about whole life. And you know, the, that's the problem because the biggest problem that Will Rogers said uh, that Americans have is that Americans, the biggest problem is they, the, not what they don't know. It's, it's what they think they know that just ain't so. So if you think that I'm going to sit here and talk to you about a life insurance policy, then this might be a good time for you to just stop listening because that's absolutely not what I'm going to talk to you about. The whole life vehicle that I'm going to show you today, this isn't your standard off the shelf whole life. This isn't your normal whole life insurance policy. This is just a gateway into the insurance company's general account. And the Rockefellers found the way to create this banking system through special provisions within these insurance contracts that allowed them to do a few things. First off, it allowed them to earn a guaranteed 4%. Okay. Mm. Secondly, it gave them 100% full control of their money. I'm always talking about control. Let me stop you real quick, Chris. Yep. There was a good comment uh, from one of the viewers, which is, Rich is nice, but is this just going to help? What about just a decent standard of living? Well, is what you're going to talk about right now, can it just help the average person just have a decent standard of living? Oh, I love that. Forget getting rich, but can you just help? Is this going to just help the average person? Yes. So this present, the stuff I'm going to show you today, number one. So the average person, what are some of their problems? Wouldn't the average person like to learn how to get all the money back for every car they're going to buy, drive and own? So that's number one. Number two, the average person probably has a lot of debt. I speak to a lot of your people and they, a lot of them have problems with debt and I show them the answer. I'm going to literally show you one of the biggest secrets to how you can pay off debt in a way you've never seen it done. And I'm going to show you raw numbers on exactly how it was done with one of my clients. And it's so does this, I'm only talking about the wealthy right now because these are the people that pioneered this. And this is the knowledge that they had that we don't, we don't have. And I didn't have it up until 2014. So I don't want you to think that what I'm showing you is for the wealthy. This is known in the, in the space of the wealthy because they've been privy to this type of planning. The average person has never known how to do this. And that's my mission to go out there and to teach people exactly how this works. So yes, will this help the average person? 100%. Can I help everybody? Absolutely not. There's two people I can't help. I can't help somebody that's not currently saving something or that isn't, you know, th there are some people that I meet that literally every penny they make goes back out the door and they're making no extra payments on any of their debts. It's very difficult for me to help you in that space. I can show you some things, but this system may not work for you. But for anybody that's saving money in a 401k, anybody that's saving a little bit of money in a checking or savings or, or somewhere, or maybe making extra payments on those credit cards or their debts, I can show you something that will change your life forever. All right, let's go. Let's get into it. All right. So let me, let me do this. So you understand the Rockefellers created this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I got to figure out how to do this. There it is. All right. Let me get to the stuff that matters. You're up. I just want to get to the good stuff here. I'm going to start right. Uh, you know what? I'm going to start right here. There's so many, there's a lot of stuff here. And, and folks, what I'm going to show you, I'm not going to go through this entire thing. I'm going to give you a video that you can watch if you like what I'm going to show you. And you can go back and watch the entire presentation. But I really just kind of want to walk you through some of the biggest mysteries of money and debunk those mysteries. So the first thing, if I asked every single one of you, what is the actual definition of money? Uh, doctor, what would you say the definition of money is? Mm, well, something I use to make purchases with. Okay, close. Money is nothing more than a means of exchange. If you think about money, all we do is we exchange money for things, right? Money for this book, money for food, money for car. It's just, it's just a means of exchange. It's all money ever has been. And it doesn't matter if it's green, if it's pink, if it's red, if it's blue, it doesn't matter what kind of money it is. It's just a means of exchange has been since the beginning of time. And then if I asked every single one of you and I said, what company in the world uses compound interest? What would you say? Banks. Banks. That's the number. I, I hear Wall Street. I hear banks. But the number one thing people say is that banks use compound interest. But banks do not use compound interest. You see, banks charge us compound interest. 
Banks mm -hmm. pay us compound interest, but banks do not use compound interest. As a matter of fact, there is not a business in the world that uses compound interest because compound interest involves you putting your money somewhere and leaving it and never touching it, which oh, is essentially, yeah. yeah. So banks move money, don't they? Banks yeah. are in the business of continuously moving money, wow. but we are, we're not taught to move money. We're taught to give up control of our money, let somebody else control our money and they move it and then they pay us compound interest. Now I'm not saying compound interest isn't a good thing. It really is. But compound interest is only the, uh, the most effective when you actually have access and control of that money and you can earn what's called uninterrupted compound interest, which is what we're going to talk about. So then your dollars, are they worth more now or in the future? We already went over this. Your dollars are worth the most right now. And if you don't believe me about that, think back to 10 or 20 years ago. How many candy bars could you have bought for $1? The answer, is, the answer is more than today. So your dollars are worth the most amount today. But what we do with our dollars is we continuously give up control of them. And then there's this wonderful thing that we talked about a second ago is taxes. Do they go up or do they go down? Everybody would say they go up, right? Look, mm -hmm. at, even, even if taxes don't go up, don't they just find more shit to tax us on? That's like right. Fl Florida is my favorite. And I, I, you mentioned a couple of people from Florida. There is mass people from New York moving to Florida because there's no state income tax. But every time I go to Florida, the second I get off the plane and I rent a car and I'm driving down your lovely throughways and the beautiful sunshine and looking at the palm trees, I don't even, I don't even make it a quarter mile before I hit a toll booth. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll pay the toll. And then another quarter mile, I pay another toll and another and another, and another. They just find more shit to tax us on if they're not going to raise the taxes. So taxes will always go up. But the one thing that's really funny is everything in our lives we've been taught to do is to give up control. And the number one thing is why is there $44 trillion sitting in, and this is in just the U.S., folks. So I know we got some people from Australia, from New Zealand, from all over the place, but just the U.S., $44 trillion sitting in employer-sponsored retirement plans, 401ks, 403bs. Why? Well, that's because that's what we've been told to do with our money. We've been told to give up control of our good dollars today, the ones you said that were worth, worth the most. We give up control of those dollars, and then we wait someday in the future, which is 59 and a half, to then take that money back Number one, inflation decreased the value of that. But number two, are, don't we pay tax on those retirement dollars? Unless it's a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k, we pay taxes, don't we? So we're going to pay tax on a higher amount of money at a higher tax bracket, and we're going to get back weaker dollars. Where does that make any freaking sense? It doesn't. But that's just what we've been told to do. See, what we've actually been told to do is we've been told to do things with money that we've, we would never do with things that money buys. Mm -hmm. I love this analogy, this, this example. Would you ever go to the grocery store, buy a loaf of bread, take that loaf of bread, come home, put it in your freezer and close the door and then wait 5, 10 or 15 years, come back to that same freezer, open it, take out that lovely Italian loaf of bread and eat it. Would you eat it? No, it's freezer burned. You would not eat that. But the same thing with cars. You wouldn't buy a car today and wait 5, 10, 15 years to drive the car. And you wouldn't buy your primary residence and wait 5, 10 or 15 years to move into your house. But that's what we do with our money. We give up control of it. We let somebody else have control. And what they do is they move that money because they know how to, and they make a ton of money on that. And then what do we do? We get paid back with weaker dollars. Look, and I'm just trying to wake you guys up. These are the myths. These are the facts. And then they, they blind us with the, why do we put money in 401ks? Oh, we get a tax deduction today. Yeah, but that tax deduction today, you're essentially, do you want to pay tax on the seed or the harvest? You need to make that decision. I'd rather pay the taxes today on the dollars that I have versus paying higher taxes on a, a larger sum of money. And then they get us with the match. A lot of 401ks or employer-sponsored plans give a match. That is free money. But if you get a match of 3%, why are you putting more than 3% in? Because they've, that's what they told you to do. So this is a fun thing that I always do. Like, let's just assume, let's, let's, I, doctor, you're going to buy a car today. Can I use you as, as the example? Yes. 
All right, so you're gonna buy a $25,000 car today. Now, guys, don't get hung up on the dollar amount. This works for a Ford Focus or a Ferrari. I'm just using a $25,000 car. So he's gonna buy a $25,000 car. That's so, a Honda Civic these days. That is, a, and a Honda Civic is a great car, just so everybody knows. But you know, maybe you don't want a Honda Civic. Maybe you want a G-Wagon or you want a Ferrari. Great, just add a zero to it, all right? <laughs> so you want the car, but and then you've got some money parked at your local conventional bank. So you're in Texas now. So you've got the bank, the money at, you got 25 grand sitting at the bank of Texas and that bank is paying you 4%. Now, let me ask you, are you getting 4% on your money at your bank? No way. So let's just pretend for today that you found yourself a really, really, really good bank. And because you found a really good bank, I'm today going to play your banker, banker, Chris just has a ring to it. So you got this 25 grand sitting at this really good bank earning 4%, but you, you need a car. So you come into the bank and you say, banker Noggle, can I take out my $25,000 that's earning 4%? And, and I say to you, I say, well, yeah, sure. May I ask what you're, what you're using for? Well, I'm going to go pay cash for a car because I don't want payments. And as your good banker from your really good bank, I say to you, I say, well, hold on a second. What if our bank, this really good bank, agreed to loan you $25,000 at 6%? for 60 months and your 25,000 will just sit in the bank earning its 4% and we'll just use it as collateral. We'll just keep it there as collateral. You'd probably look at that and say, that doesn't seem like a good deal, Mr. Noggle. I mean, you're gonna charge me 6% when I'm only making four. Mm -hmm. But I tell you as your good banker, I say, yeah, but what if our bank will pay you more money on your 25,000 that's earning 4% over the exact same time frame, the 60 months, than you will ever pay us on that $25,000 loan we made you, even though the loan is at 6%. Would you think that's even possible? Can you make more earning four when you're paying six? Doesn't seem like you could. Yeah, general math, right? You'd probably say, man, I thought you were good at math. I thought you were America's number one money mentor and my banker, six minus four is negative two. What are you talking about? And I would say, let me run the math for you. So here it is. Your monthly payment on that loan would be 483.32. So over 60 months, you would have paid 28,999 for that Honda Civic, 25,000 for the car, and then the rest is interest. The, the brings you to 28,999. Now, do you want to take a guess at how much, remember your money in the bank continually earned uninterrupted compound interest because you never had to take that money out. It just sat there and earned 4%. How much money do you think you'd have after 60 months? Just give me a guess. Uh, well, I'll guess 30 since I know it happened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 30, so you're cheating, but 30,525. 30, so but the key is because you're not touching the principal. Bingo. Well, it's actually more than that. Your wow. balance is going up in the bank because you're compounding, right? So you're every day you're making more, you're making 4% on a higher balance. Every day that money's going up. The car loan, isn't that balance going down? Yes. Yeah. So you were able to make $1,526. But I do this example just because this is just another myth. Most people would have just very quickly said six minus four is negative two, which is not the right way to do this because you just simply don't understand Albert Einstein's theory of uninterrupted compound interest. He called it the eighth wonder of the world, the most powerful thing in the financial universe. Look it up. You can see all sorts of stuff. But that's the only reason I did that. So I'm going to skip this slide. I'm going to skip this slide because we already talked about what it is. But essentially, actually, let me go back one. So this is the machine, right? That specially designed whole life insurance policy from a mutually owned company. And the other thing too, that I do want to point out here, that's important to understand. I told you where it was originated, right? The Rockefellers, the JPs, the Morgans. But the other thing you need to understand is who uses this today? Yes, the wealthy use this. Corporations use this. It's called COLI. You can look this up. You can Google this if you don't believe me. It's C-O-L-I. It stands for Company Owned Life Insurance. And then banks. Matter of fact, banks are the number one purchasers of whole life insurance in the world. They own more whole life than they do all the land and the buildings combined. Look Again, look that up. Go to Bank of America's. Let me, stop you, real quick. Let me yeah. ask you real quick, Chris, because 
Um, some people are wondering if this is going to be like some weird infomercial or something like that. And I just want to tell infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teaching you how this works. I don't, I don't even have there. I forgot to tell you in the beginning, like I'm not selling you anything today. I mean, unless you want a free book, like, I guess you could say I'm, I'm telling you to go to the, the link for the free books, but you got it only all your pain is the shipping on the book. I'm giving them for, them for free. Okay. There is no sale here. I'm just, listen, every single time I come on, I just want to get this out of the way. Okay. Anytime I come on to this show, I am here just to teach you things. There is no hidden agenda. There is no sale at the end. If you want more information, I'll tell you how to reach me, but that's it. I'm just teaching you. I know everybody's got their guard up all the time. Everybody just thinks that this is an infomercial, a multi-level marketing thing, a big sale. Look at folks. If I have nothing to sell you, I'm talking to you about a concept, a system I learned. And that's it. If it's something you like and you want to do, we'll talk about it and I'll show you how to get it set up. But I'm not here to sell you anything. So let's just get that right out of the way. And let's just not get that out of the way for today. Let's get that out of the way for every single time that I'm ever on this show. I will never, ever be here to sell you something. I'm just teaching you how this concept works. And that's actually why I love having you, man. All right. Keep go back to your. Uh, All right. So, so bully, you can look that up, but bank of America, pull up their balance sheet and look at how much money they have in real estate and land, and then look down and see how much money they have in whole life insurance or cash value life insurance. It's, it's four times as much banks buy this because they understand it. And we don't because we think it's just life insurance, but that's what I'm going to debunk again, where it's all about just debunking the truth. So you learn what the wealthy know, what they do and how they use money. So you can change your life by just mimicking what they do. And everybody can do this. If you can fog a mirror, you can do this. <laughs> Remember that example I gave you with the car in the bank. Yeah. We already agreed that your bank doesn't pay you 4%, right? But who does? Mutually owned insurance companies. That's what they pay. That's the guaranteed interest rate they pay. So then you're probably asking, well, what is that 6%? The 6% is the highest amount the insurance company will ever charge you on the loan that they make you from their general account. You see, in order for your 25 grand to sit in that insurance company's general account earning 4%, the insurance company has to lend you money from their general account. Now, the current interest rate that they charge right now is 5%. My example, I show six because I like to under promise and over deliver. So if I tell you four or 6%, that's the most the insurance companies will charge you. And also the 4%, that's not real either. That's just the guaranteed amount the insurance company pays you. You see, they also pay you a dividend every year. They're mutually owned. So they pay a dividend each year. So what you could expect from a company like a mass mutual would be 6.2%, 4% guaranteed, 2.2% would be the dividend. So you're actually, I'm just showing you the worst case scenario here with this example. Mm -hmm. Now, in order for me to really show this to you, I have to teach you what banks do because a lot of you think you know how banks operate, but maybe you really don't. So do you mind if I just teach everybody how a bank operates? Let's do it. Let's do it. It's very simple. So Dr. V goes to the bank and deposits $100,000. Now, again, don't get hung up on the numbers, guys. This is just an example. This could be $100. It could be $1,000. You deposit money at your bank. All of you are doing that. And your bank is going to pretend to pay you 4%. So when you deposit money at the bank, it's a good feeling, isn't it? It's a deposit to you is an asset for you. But to the bank, that deposit represents a liability on their books. And we don't like liabilities, right? If we, if we could, we would change every single liability we have to an asset. Well, that's what banks know how to do. Remember I said banks move money. So what does the bank do? Well, in those glass cubicles behind you when you're making your deposit, they're lending that money out. So maybe it's your neighbor who's buying his new house. So they take your money and everybody else's money and they loan that money back out at a higher interest rate. Let's just pretend that that mortgage is gonna be 7%. So they take your money and everybody else's, they pay you 4%, they lend it out at seven for that mortgage. Then your neighbor exchanges the mortgage or the money from the mortgage for keys to the house. There's your exchange, that's all money is. And the seller deposits the money back in the bank. Okay, this is the cycle. So I just want you to see what's happening here. Bank uh -huh. takes your money, loans it out, Get, then that money is exchanged for goods and services, which is a house in this case. Then the seller puts the money back in, creates another liability. You run to the bank and you want a new car. So you buy yourself a new car and the bank charges you 8% on that loan. You exchange the car loan to the dealership for the keys and the dealership deposits the money. Again, another exchange and now asset versus liability. 
-hmm. The bank then loans the money out to you to do a home remodel. Maybe your spouse wants a new kitchen. Maybe the, the man of the house wants a man cave, whatever. You do a home remodel loan. The bank charges you 9%. You pay the contractors. They deposit the money at the bank. Then everything's going so well. Your neighbor got the new house and you didn't like your neighbor anyway, so you're happy they're moving. You went out and got yourself a new car, okay? You remodeled the kitchen and your, your husband gets a man cave. So everything's going so good. You take a trip to Las Vegas and you have a lot of, a lot of fun, but you put it all on black and it hit red. So you racked up some debt on those credit cards. So you go to the bank and they give you a debt consolidation loan. But out of all of these, this is the only loan that the bank made that's unsecured. The, the mortgage is secured by the house. The car is secured by the car. The home remodel loan is secured by a second position on the house. This one's unsecured. So they charge 12%. You pay the credit cards off and you see that. But look at this little chart here. This is what banks do. Money in, money out. They're moving money. But every single time they're doing this, I like how much risk are they taking here? Not much, right? Secured assets. They're not taking a lot of risk. And who's in control of every one of these transactions? Is it you? Or is it the bank? Yeah, it's absolutely the bank. So if we wanted to figure that out, like this is a genius business model. So how much does the bank make? Well, we just got to go through and do the math. Uh, seven minus four is three. Eight minus four is four. Nine minus four is five. And I'm just doing this quick. It's just simple math, right? 12 minus four is eight. How much money did the bank make on our money? Well, if you added it up, you'd get 20%. How many of you would be okay making 20% on someone else's money? Sign me up, right? <laughs> Sign me up. I'm all in, folks. Give me that 20% because I'll take that over the four. But you see, there's a mathematical problem if that's what you think the bank makes. Because the bank is giving you 4% and they're making 20. Uh -huh. So if you thought that that's what they made, you're wrong. Because the bank actually made five times more than you did, which means the bank made 500% on the money you left there. Now I do a lot of, yeah, that's, that's nothing. But here's the facts. So I love backing everything I do with factual data because yeah. I can tell you the banks make anything I want and you might believe me or you might be like, I don't believe that for a second. So great. Go to bauerfinancial.com right there and you will see that there's not a bank out there that makes less than 400% on the money we deposit there. Bauer Financial allows you to pull up any bank for any time frame, and you'll see they make between 400 and 1300%. Now, how many of you would be okay making 400 to 1300% on someone else's money? All of us. <laughs> all of us. And all you need to do is understand the principles of what banks do. Now, can you do exactly that? No, because you can't take other people's money and then move their money. But what you can do is take back control of your money and then move your money. And let me show you how to do that. So you see, here's how we handle our money. I'm just going to break down $1. Okay, This is super simple. I keep everything at like a fifth grade level. This is the annual pattern of spending. So on average, automobiles cost each household. Now I'm talking about the car payment, the insurance, the fuel, the maintenance, roughly 20 cents of every dollar you make goes to automobiles. Housing mm -hmm. is 30 cents of every dollar. Everything else is 40 cents of every dollar. Now, if you followed that and you added that up, that's 90 cents of every single dollar you make in your life is going to somebody else. So that leaves us 10% mm -hmm. to save. Now, doctor, how much do you think the average American is actually saving right now? Is it 10%? It's fucking donut. A negative number. Yeah, it's wow. a negative number. But that's okay because we're just going to pretend that every one of you on here, you are my five percenters. Because as I, I didn't open with this, but normally I would explain that only 5% out of the population is going to be financially secure. And only 5% are going to be the ones saving 10% of their, their annual income. But let's let's go one step deeper. What if I could show you how to build wealth and, and take back money by not working harder, not working longer, not giving up control of your money, and by definitely not taking on any risk, by changing just one thing. And that one thing you'd have to change would be where that money went first. You see, if you just started paying yourself first and then pay everybody else with weaker dollars, you'd have a lot more control. But not only that, then I can show you, which I'm going to, I'm gonna show you how to build wealth by taking back all that money that you were giving away to everybody else. So what would it look like if all you knew how to do was to go back and take back the interest that you're giving away to everybody else? Mm. Now, remember automobiles were 20 cents of every single dollar. 
And we can't take back all 20 cents. But if we didn't have to pay interest, on the car loans that we do or the lease payments, those in involve interest as well. If we didn't have to pay interest to a bank or a finance company and we could just take that back, how much would that be? I'll tell you, it'd be about five cents. So right there, we were saving 10 cents of every dollar, but now if all we knew how to do was take back the interest that we're paying to everybody else on the automobiles, we would then add five cents to our savings. Do you see what that did to your savings? Now, you might not know that, but you just increased your savings by 50%. Stop you real, really quickly. Please. Now, you're Because in case someone's joining late, you're not actually meaning five cents. You mean 5% of $1. Correct. Five cents of $1. So 5% of all your money. Right. Really what you mean. Am I correct? Yeah. But I'm in this example, just so everybody's clear, I'm just taking $1 of all the money you make $1 and I'm breaking down a single dollar just to keep it simple. So this, in this example, it is showing just five cents of that $1. Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. So now here's, this is the one that always gets people and this, this makes people pretty mad housing. So your housing how many of you, oh, I, I can't really have you answer, but normally I'd get you to answer. How many of you actually have a mortgage on your house? You know, and if, you, if you're raising your hand and you're saying, I do, I do, you know, great. And if you don't raise your hand, you know somebody that has a mortgage, right? Well, I challenge you to go in and look at your mortgage statement. And I want you to tell me how much of your monthly mortgage payment is going to interest and how much is going to principal. Dude, now, it's all going to interest when you first sign up. I you're mean, darn right. Little principal, yeah. That's why. I mean, you can pay on a house for five years, and then you look and you're like, you still owe this ton, ton of principal. Yep. So that's exactly that's exactly correct. You see, the banks figured out a long time ago. You see, here's the things. Like, you know, you might think banks are crazy for being the number one purchasers of whole life, but you also might think they're crazy for figuring this out but they're not crazy at all. They just know something we don't know. Mm -hmm. Banks found a way to basically make all their interest up front on everything that they do. Mm -hmm. In your mortgage, it's not about the interest rate. You see, the funniest thing, I laugh about this all the time. When banks come up with low interest rate loans, right? Oh, we got a big sale on a loan. It's going to be 3%, 30-year fix. Rush on over. Uh -huh. There's literally a line out the door of people that want to refinance their house. The bank is sitting there laughing at you because they don't care about the interest rate they care about the volume of interest. So what is the volume of interest? Well, the volume of interest is, is exactly why the bank keeps 80 to 85% of every single payment you make on your mortgage in the first seven years. But then the bank was even smarter. They spent the money and the time to go out and figure out how often do people refinance their mortgage? And they found it's every five to seven years. Every five to seven years, people will buy a new house or refinance their mortgage. Every single time you do that, you reset that clock. So mm -hmm. the bank is always on almost every single mortgage getting 80 to 85%. So what if you could just take back the interest that you're giving to the bank? What if you didn't need to pay the bank interest and you could take that money back? This seems like a pipe dream, but I'm going to, I'm going to show you at the end how this works. You would literally be able to take back 25 cents of every single dollar that you make. You take that back because you're not giving the banks the, they're not winning anymore. You are. It, it can, is it, would it be safe to say or correct to say if you're saving that 25 cents or 25%, that would be the equivalent of earning 25% more or? Yeah, exactly. Like even the five cents. This is no different, folks. You got to break this down and really think about this. I'm not showing you how to work harder. I'm not showing you some like snake oil thing. I'm simply showing you how to take back the money that you're giving away to everybody else. I haven't shown you how yet. I'm just showing you the impact right now because this is what you do with your money. So if someone had, let's say, let's say the average, let's say they earn a hundred, just keep the math easy, a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's what they take home. Mm -hmm. And they did this system and they recaptured 25%, then that'd be like the equivalent if they got a raise to 125,000. That is correct. But we're actually at 130 now with the auto and the house. Yeah, once for the auto, that was yeah. 5%. So now the house, but wow, and then, 30%. Yeah, but then everything else, which is everything else you spend money on, diapers, dinners, uh, you know, everything else, Netflix. We use credit cards for a lot of things and we don't always pay those credit cards off because the average household in America has $30,000 in credit card debt. So I know they're not paying it off, but if we didn't have to pay the credit cards interest anymore and we could just pay that interest to ourselves, we'd be able to take back five cents there. So you mm -hmm. literally just changed the dynamics. So you took back 
35 cents of every single dollar without working any harder, without working any longer, without taking on any risk. And all you did is changed one thing and you learned how to mimic what the banks do by, and all you did is you learned how to take back the money that you're giving away to everybody else. Mm. So this is my favorite part. Oh. That's, that's a badass car right there. Do you guys remember the movie Gone in 60 Seconds? Yeah. There she is right there, Eleanor. Oh. That is literally the epiphany of my dream car right there. I don't have one, just so everybody knows. That's my dream car. But what if I knew how to get all the money back for that car and for every car that I will ever buy, drive, and own? And matter of fact, I do know how this works because I just bought my wife an SUV as her push gift because she just had her little daughter. And I didn't go to the bank and borrow money. I used this system, my banking policy, to pay for the car. Wait, wait, now, let me say that. Let me ask. You did not borrow money from a bank. No. For your wife's new van because she just had your one week old baby. It's not a van. <laughs> well, what did you get her? Oh, I just I just got her an SUV. Got her an SUV. Do, do you want to say what type of SUV? That's uh, a Porsche. Shut up. Yeah. So you have her. Not a, a new one, though. It's not a SUV. new one. That's a Cayenne, right? It is, yeah. Okay. And you you did that using this system that you're about mm -hmm. to tell us. Yep. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did it in just a second. Okay. A lot of numbers here, so I got to go slow. But okay. let's do it. This is very simple. So the first thing I need to do is remember that machine that I told you that I'm using, right? That specially designed whole life from a mutually owned company that pays dividends. Well, we have to understand a couple of things because all you have a misconception of what whole life insurance is. Well, you really don't. It's life insurance, but you don't know how to use it the way that we do. You don't know how to use it the way the Rockefellers do or the way banks do and the way that I used it to buy this car. But what we have to understand is you think of the payments that you make to an insurance policy as being exactly that, a premium. You don't like premiums. That's money going out of your family that's never going to come back. But you like making deposits in the bank. You already told me that. The deposits we're going to make into this machine, the specially designed policy, are going to be premium deposits. Okay, They are deposits just like the bank, and you have access to them. Secondly, age, a lot of people say to me, oh, I'm too old for this. Like I've looked at whole life insurance. It's too expensive. You're looking at it all wrong because in this example, age doesn't matter. You see, yeah, I have several comments of that. Like, what, what do you do if I'm 65 or 59? I'm too old. It's too Not at all. You actually Not at all. Several comments like that. Great. So let's, let's debunk that now. So if I took a 30-year-old and a 65-year-old and I put the exact same amount of money into the exact same specially designed whole life, the one thing that would be exactly the same would be the amount of cash value that each of them have. But what would be very different? would be the amount of death benefit they have. You see, the 30-year-old would have a higher death benefit. The 65-year-old would have a significantly lower death benefit. But mm -hmm. the way that we design these is not for death benefit. Literally, the only reason there's a death benefit is because it has to have one by IRS rules. The IRS has specific rules called the max seven pay rules. Don't get hung up on this, but we have to abide by them. So every policy we design will have a death benefit, but it will be much lower than any life insurance policy you would normally get because we don't care about the death benefit. We care about how much money you have to use today. And I've never met anybody in my life that cares more about the money somebody's gonna get the day they die than they do about the the money they have to use today. True or true? True. All right. Let's get into this. And I, I don't want to get too specific in this. Again, I'm going to go fast for the sake of time because what I'm going to show you, you might seem like this is amazing, but what I'm going to show you after this is going to just simply blow your mind and I need to make sure I have time. So with this, what we're going to show is we're going to show an individual making $10,000 deposits each year for seven years. Now that 10,000 doesn't have to be all at once. This could be somebody making a, a deposit of 833 on a monthly basis. They could be doing a weekly deposit of a few hundred bucks every week. This is really, when you look at a $10,000 deposit, you're like, oh, there's no way I could do that. Sure you could. If you broke down everything that you're doing and where all the money is going, you absolutely probably could find a way to do this. But even if you couldn't do 10, Maybe you could do five. Maybe you could do six. It doesn't matter. I'll never, ever tell you how much you should deposit in your banking policy. Just look at what you're saving now. If you're putting 10 plus percent into a 401k, after what I just told you, you might want to think about backing that down to the match, which might be three or four. Take the difference 
and do something like this after I show you. So this is just an example showing someone making a $10,000 deposit. Now, unlike any whole life you've ever seen, when you make a $10,000 deposit into this machine, you are immediately, and what I mean by immediately, I mean in the, immediately in the first 30 days when your check clears, that money is available. But in the first year, you're not going to have access to 100% of your money. In this example, which is the worst example, I even hate showing it, but legally, I have to show you the worst example I possibly can. Now, just so you know, if you like what I'm going to show you, I want you to know that it will never, ever, ever look like this. It will be drastically better than this. But year one, you deposit 10, you have $5,800, almost 60% available immediately in the first 30 days. So you continue to do that for three years. Now, three years from today, just like if you were saving up for a car today, you'd have to put money in a savings or checking account and you'd save and save. And when you had enough money to buy the car, you'd go pay cash for the car. But the way you would do it is you would pay cash, which means you exchange your good dollars today in exchange for a depreciating car that loses 20 to 30 percent of value the second it rolls off the, the floor. I'm going to show you how to not just do that, but how to then mimic what you do with the banks and how to get all that money back. And here's how you do it. So year three, we buy that $25,000 car. So you, in your account, you had $29,000, 29,204 is how much you had, but we took 25 out. But the one thing you don't know is your money, your full 29,204 is still earning a guaranteed 4% plus receiving a dividend each year, even though you took that money out. Do you remember earlier I said all your money's doing is acting as collateral for the loan the insurance company makes you? So that car loan right there of $25,000 is coming from your account, but it's not your money. Therefore, your money sits there and earns interest uninterrupted every mm -hmm. single day. Mm -hmm. Rule number one. So think about that, but we're going to cover that more in a bit. But if you were to have done something different, if you went to the car dealership and you said, I want that car, but I don't have 25 grand in the bank, I'm going to just take a car loan. You would have to exchange the keys for that car for a monthly payment every month, right? Now, right. let's just pretend that that monthly payment's $500. So $500 a month, that's what most of you would have to pay for a $25,000 car. It's 483. I just rounded up. You are okay every month giving $500 to the car dealership for the right to drive the car, right? I don't care if you're leasing or if you've got a car loan, you're doing this today. Mm -hmm. But in this example, you're using your own money. So why wouldn't you treat your money the same way that you treat the bank's money? Think about this. Be an honest banker and pay yourself back the same amount you would have given to the bank. It wouldn't it be more fun if you made five hundred dollar payments to your bank account instead of giving five hundred dollar bank or payments to the Bank of Texas or Bank of wherever you're at for the car loan? It would make a lot more sense. And then that five hundred dollars every month that you pay back to your bank, you have access to that money immediately. So that's what we're going to do. All we're going to do is we're going to take the five hundred we used to give to the car dealership or the finance company. We're going to pay it back to our account. We're going to do that every single year for five years. So over five years in the seventh year total, because remember three years of capitalization to save the money to buy the car. And then the rest is just you driving the car and continuing to pay the car back, but you're paying the car payment back to yourself. You deposited 70,000, 10,000 for seven years. Then mm -hmm. you paid the car loan back to yourself. So you paid yourself back 30 grand. So you total in your total amount you put into your banking system is $100,000. But then you took 25 out for the car. So now we're down to $75,000. Mm -hmm. So that's your net injection. Now I want you to look at year seven. At year seven, how much money do you have in your account? It's that number right there. 67881, right? That's how much money's in your bank account at that point. But what else do you have? Don't you have a car that's five years old in your driveway? Mm -hmm. You do. So you now have a fully paid for car. You have 67,000 and you your total basically net injection was 75. So that means for your first car that you bought using this system, this method, you got 91 cents back of every dollar or 91% of that car value back. How many of you have been driving your car for five years and could go sell your car? Well, actually, forget about selling your car. How many of you right now have gotten 91% back for the car you're driving? Probably nobody. Because remember, you didn't have to sell the car. You might think, oh, I could sell my car and probably get close to 91. But here, you didn't have to sell the car. If you sold the car, you'd have more money than what you paid for. But you got 91 cents back. But see here, now, here's the fun part. When a car gets five years old, what happens? Don't they start breaking down? 
They need yeah. new tires, new brakes. But doctor, like the biggest thing with a car is five years after you own it. Does it have that new car smell? Nope. No way. If you have kids, it has a vomit smell. I'm learning about this right <laughs> now. So the reason we need a new car after five years is not because of the brakes and the tires. It's because we want that new car smell. Mm -hmm. So we got to buy a new car. So year eight, you're going to go and you're going to buy a new car. But what you're not going to do is make another deposit. You're not going to make any more deposits. You've already capitalized your system. So there's no more deposits made. You buy another car for 25,000. Again, don't get hung up on the 25 grand. Mm -hmm. So you had, let's see, 50, 60, 70, $6,000 in your account. The insurance company gave you 25,000 and they used your account as collateral. So as a recap, how much money are you making interest and dividends on right here in this example? Anyone? How about 76,000, not 51? So we now we're just gonna repeat the same thing. So you've got the new car, the other car's still in the driveway, you've got a new car. Now you're gonna pay yourself back the $500 a month. So over five years, we put no new deposits in. We paid ourselves back the same amount you would have given to the bank anyway. So nothing changed. You just paid yourself instead of the bank. So that's $30,000 you paid yourself back for the second car. You now have in the driveway two fully bought and paid for cars. Your net injection over this next five years, years eight through 12, was how much? $5,000. So the total amount you put into this entire banking system up to this point is 75 the first seven years and 5,000 the next five years. So you got 80 grand that you put into this system. But from year seven to year 12, your account balance grew by $23,000. And you made no new deposits. All you did is did the same thing you're doing now, but you changed who gets the money first. You get it instead of the bank. But how much money did you actually make buying two cars here? Well, for any of you that are doing the math, it's 75 plus five. That's how much you put in 80 grand over 12 years. You've got two cars in the driveway, but let's pretend they're worth nothing. And now you have $91,000 in your account. Mm. 80 minus 91 is how much? Eleven. $11,000. You made $11,000 for buying two cars. You essentially now for every single car you will ever buy, drive and own, you just learned how to get all the money back on every car. And what did you do? Did you, did you work harder here? No, you changed one thing. You changed who gets the money, not the bank. You get the, the money. Now, what was the worst part about this system? This is the part no one likes. You had to follow some rules. Rule number one, you had to pay yourself first and you had to save the money, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Every year here for seven years, you had to save 10 grand. Now, again, don't get hung up on the numbers. If it's 10 grand, great. If it's 25, great. If it's five grand, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. Number two, but this is the, go ahead. I did say $10,000, like I don't have that much money to put in every year. That's what, okay. This is just an example. Sure. But people are getting caught up on that. So like, what's the minimum if somebody wanted to get started? What's the minimum deposit they could get started with? Great. So the minimum amount that we always tell, there is no minimum, but there's a guideline. Take your age, like I'm 42 years old. Take your age times 10. So that means 420 for me, 420 a month would be the minimum guideline that I should be saving in this system to make it work this way. So mm -hmm. if you're 60, it's 600. If you're 20, it's 200. That's the minimum. Any You can do any amount up to a million dollars a year, but I'm just kind of going minimum to maximum. There is no right or wrong number. We will never ever tell you how much to deposit. The amount you deposit is the amount you want, but how we do it is like, if I were to do a conversation, I would look at everywhere where your money's going. And then we would basically do a, a budget. We'd figure out here's what you're spending. Here's what you're making. Let's change some things. If you're making extra payments on credit cards, let's back that down to the minimum and let's save the difference and pay yourself first. Now so, that's just that's clear. If somebody, let's say somebody said, I only have 500 bucks. That's fine. And so after three years, they'd only have $1,500 in the account. So they couldn't go out and buy a $25,000 car. 1500 or 15,000? 1500, because they're only putting $500 a year. Oh, th this would never work for $500 a year. I'm just being honest. I mean, you gotta, you gotta follow that guideline. You gotta take your age times 10. That's gonna give you your minimum guideline for monthly. I mean, oh, again, month. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, again, this, this, I'm not saying this works for everybody, but this works for just about everybody that's currently saving money. If somebody's not saving any money because they're living paycheck to paycheck and they're making no extra payments on any of their monthly payments to their debtors, 
this is just not going to work. If mm -hmm. you're on a fixed income with social security and that's all you have to live on, this system isn't going to work for you. I'm just being honest. I, I want to say that I can help everybody, but I can't. I can only help some people that are already saving or have are giving a bunch of money away to everybody else. And we can restructure that. But if that's the case, if you're saving money, you could do this. It doesn't have to be 10 grand. It could be five grand. And for some people, it could be a hundred thousand a year. It just doesn't matter what you put into the system. I'm just trying to get you to understand the concept because no matter what, this works because all you did is you changed who you pay first. You changed the fact of who you're making monthly payments to. You're making monthly payments to yourself. And the most important thing is, is you're recycling and recapturing the money that you used to give away to everybody else. Because before you used to give all that money away to the bank for your car payment. Now in this system, you have to pay, you're paying it to yourself. Now, what sucks about this? It's not instant gratification, but life is not a, a my, life is not a sprint. Life yeah. is a marathon. Once you get it set up and running, it's fucking like automatic, right? I oh, mean it's beyond automatic. Like, and, and what I'm going to show you next folks, if you guys like that car example, like that was when you watch fireworks, right? We all have gone to the 4th of July and watch fireworks, right? Like halfway through the fireworks, there's this crazy, like, it seems like it's the grand finale and you're like, Oh my God, here it is, honey. You know, it's the grand finale kids watch. And then all of a sudden it just keeps on going. And you're like, Oh, false alarm. That wasn't the grand finale. What I just showed you was that middle part of the, the fireworks show. What I'm going to show you next is the grand finale, because what I'm going to show you next is what will change people's lives. Buying cars. Yeah, great. You know, if you want to wait three years, four years and save to buy a car, that system works awesome, but that's not going to, that's not going to change anything for you today. What I'm going to show you next is going to change things for you today and absolutely change things for you for the rest of your life. But you guys got to get out of your own head and stop thinking that the numbers I'm putting on the screen are your numbers. I, I had to. Do you want to save this for the next time you're on? Because I feel we're over an hour. Uh, I, I can do it quick and you guys got to see this. I've already got them. Do we have can what, everybody do wait? It, do it quick. And then yeah. what we're going to do is bring you back on next time and you can go in more details. How about that? Okay. I'm going to do this really quick, folks. This is going to be fast, but I'm going to give you a video to watch. Sorry, I'm going long. I'm so passionate about this. I tend to go too much. This is a real example of a real client of ours. Okay. So this was a chiropractor, this chiropractor, this is how many debts he had. So he had all of these debts. Discover, Lowe's, Nordstrom, Wells Fargo. That's how much in debt he was. 478,774. He was a chiropractor. They make good money, but not a ton of money. That's what his monthly payment was. He was paying $5,777 to everybody else. That's 69 grand a year. How many of you would feel trapped if that was you? Well, some of you are probably saying that is me. It's just the numbers are different. I am trapped and I don't know how to get out. Folks, if I took what this man was saving, so this chiropractor every single year with his 401k, his savings, his checking, he was saving a total of $25,000. Now I know again, you know, don't get hung up on the numbers. That was his numbers. So I have to use his numbers. When he met us and he saw this, he said, okay, I'm saving 25,000 in various things. What if I just took the 25 grand and I went to pay this debt off and I took 25 grand each year, paid that debt down. It would have taken him 19 years. Yes. How many of you want to, how many of you want to be in debt for 19 more years? No. What if I could show you how we help this guy do this, pay all of this off in yeah. six and a half years without changing actually, anything? You actually just addressed a very big question for a lot of the viewers, which are they like, why, why shouldn't I just take my money, my extra money and pay down my debts? And you just said it. This mm -hmm. chiropractor would take 19 years to pay off his debt. So how did you do it in six years? Okay, so here's how. We changed nothing in this chiropractor's life. We didn't change how hard he works. We didn't change how much he saves. We didn't change how much work or how much risk he takes. And we didn't lose control of his money. All we did is change where the money went. We took the 25 grand and we deposited into this specially designed whole life that I'm talking about. And immediately when he deposits that 25 grand within the first 30 days, we take the max amount out. 14,863 is how much we took out of his deposit or his, his account. We applied that 14,863 to Discover, to Lowe's, to Nordstrom. And these are in order from lowest to highest. It's called snowballing. So we paid Discover off, Lowe's off, and Nordstrom down. So by doing that, that frees up $448 every single month because you just add those numbers up that he was given to Discover Lowe's and you then take the, that dollar amount that was freed up and you pay it back to yourself. So what do I mean by that? Well, that $448, that's not new money. That's money you were giving away. 
You take that $448, you set up an automatic transfer or bill pay, and you have that money go into a brand new bank account that you create at your local bank. So you go to your bank and you set up a new bank account. Now you're probably thinking, why the heck would I do that? Well, because you're probably a lot like I am and like this chiropractor was where you're not conditioned enough to not touch your darn money. If you put your money, I'm being honest here. Like think about it. If you put your money in your normal checking account and you put an extra $448 in there every single month, do you think that money's going to be there at the end of the month? No, it's going to vanish. It's the black hole. So I need you to set up a... Yeah, this is going to be a new bank account designed just to pay off your debt. You have to be regimented and you have to be conditioned to do this. That 448 bucks, we just saved that money in this brand new bank account, which for the rest of today, I'm going to call a segregated bank account. Now, the one thing I need to go back and explain that 25 grand you deposited into this account, that 25 grand will continually for the rest of your life earn 4% plus be paid a dividend each year. Meaning in if this was mass mutual, you'd be making 6.2%. Your bank account that you guys re reference, why wouldn't I just use my regular bank account? You're not, we already agreed, you're not making 4% and you're not earning uninterrupted compound interest because you can't go to your bank account, take your money out and then still earn interest on it. Now, can you? So let's go to year two. So now you understand what we're doing here. Year two, same thing. We deposit 25 grand, but now Year two, we take more out. We take 16,571. But remember that segregated bank account that we were putting 448 bucks into? That amount is now $5,378. That's how much is in that new segregated account. So we're going to take that loan immediately 30 days after you deposit that 25 grand. We're going to take 16 from your policy. You're going to take 5,300 from that segregated account. And we're going to pay off Nordstrom, Wells Fargo, the private loan, and we're going to pay down that BMW loan. In doing that, how much did we just save? Well, we just knocked our monthly payment from 5777 down to 3860. That's how much is going to everybody else in red. You're now saving 1917. That 1917 is not new money again. It is money you were giving away to everybody else. Now what you're going to do, you're going to take that 1917 and what what are they going to do, doctor? Pay it to themselves. They're going to pay it to themselves in that segregated account. Year 3, we're just repeating it, but now see Look at year three. What just happened different here? You deposit 25 grand. You immediately, 30 days later, you go back and you take out how much? 25,541. Is that not more than what you deposited? The first two years sucked, right? You're like, why would I ever do this? If I deposit 25 and I can't even take 25 out, because some things come to those, the good things come to those who wait. Now, we hit our efficiency point in these policies. The compounding is now working in your favor. You're now taking more out than what you deposit. So you take the 25,541 and the 23,004, which is the 1917 that you saved, that you used to give away to everybody else. And we take the combination of those two, which is 48,000 bucks. We pay off BMW, we pay off that boat loan, and we pay down your condo. We are three years into this. We now have 283,000 in debt. Our monthly amount that we're giving to everybody else is 2100 and now we're saving 3677. So now 3677 goes into that segregated account. Now real quick sidebar, that money that's going into that segregated account. If you had an emergency in your household and you needed to access that money for one reason or the other, could you? Absolutely. Who's in control of this? You are. You weren't in control before. This chiropractor wasn't in control before, but now he's in control of that 3677. But let's assume nothing happened because you really want to pay your debt off. But let's look at the marathon. This is what people don't like. They don't like the fact that doing this system, building wealth takes time. Every year, this chiropractor had to deposit 25 grand for the first three years. He put 75 grand into this system, but he took money out each year, a total of 5,500. If this were your normal bank account, how much would be left in your bank? Okay. Would it be 20 grand? Yeah. 75 minus 55. But how much is left in your account here with this example? It's not 20 grand. It's 75. You're still earning interest and dividends on the full 75,000, even though you took 55 of it out. I'm trying to get you to think about what's really going on here. So let's go faster now. Year four, same thing happens. You deposit 25, but now you take 26,304 out immediately in the first 30 days. Then you now take that 36,77 that you were saving in that segregated account. So that's 44,135. You have a total of 70,439. That's your loan from your banking policy plus your segregated account. You pay down the condo. Now, when you guys make principal payments on your mortgage, does your mortgage payment drop? 
Absolutely not. So he's paying 2100 to everybody else, which is his condo and his house mortgage payment. That doesn't change here. So year four is kind of a throwaway year. So year five, he deposits 25 grand. Then he immediately goes back and he hits a button and he takes $27,090 from his banking policy. Now think about that. He puts 25 in, 30 days later, goes back, takes 27 out. How many of you would like your bank account to operate that way? If you raised your hand, good. You're starting to understand this. He's saving 36.77, which is money he used to give away to everybody else. And he's putting that into his segregated account, which has 71. So 71 plus 27 is $98,000. He takes that money. He pays off his condo. He pays down his house. He is now five years into this system. He is only $91,000 in debt. His monthly payments to everybody else are 1221. They used to be 5777. And he's now saving 4,556. If he stopped here, would that be a good day at the office? Great day. Great day at the office. But when you're in a game, when you're playing a sports game, do you stop in the final inning or do you stop in the at the last uh, you know, section of the game? No, you finish the game. So he finishes the game and here's how he does it. Year Stop six. Win. He's going to win. Yes, we don't want any debt. So year six, he goes to make that $25,000 deposit, but the insurance company tells him, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chiropractor, you can't deposit $25,000 anymore. You can only deposit $10,000. Why? Because there's rules, folks. There's things, there's IRS limits on how much money you can put into these vehicles, and he hit his limit. So now he can only make a deposit into that first banking policy of $10,000, but he deposits $10,000. Now let's do some math. He deposits 10 grand. And how fast can he take that, that money out? Immediately in the first 30 days. But how much money does he take out? 1392. What kind of a return did that client or that chiropractor make that year on his money? If you said 30%, you're right. Does your bank pay you 30%? No, because your bank doesn't pay you uninterrupted compound interest, but this insurance company does. So he is so fired up with this. He says, you know what? Screw that. I want to keep making deposits. So he goes out and does what banks do. He opens a branch, a second branch. Mm -hmm. Banks don't have just one branch. They have two, five, 10, 50, 100. Well, you're going to not just have one policy. You're going to have multiples as well. So he opens his second banking policy. But the first policy immediately takes 13. He deposits 25 in the second and he takes 14. Plus he was saving 45, 56, which is money he used to give away. And now it's in that segregated account. So the total amount he has now is 145. How much does he owe? 76. He pays off his house. He is in zero debt. He's now saving 5777. And how this all happened is what we do. We created this map. It's called a map. We do this for every single person we work with. We create a custom map based on their debts and we show them two years into the future on how this system will pay their debts off. How to become a millionaire, eat an elephant one bite at a time. But I want to show you one other thing because some of you are thinking this. What if that chiropractor just continued to pay those houses back as planned, right? He, he got all the way down to the condo in the house. How much money would he have given to the bank? Well, it's right here. 251 months in the condo, 224 on the house. He would have given away $493,000. But now, yeah, 500 grand. But who's getting that 500 grand now with what I just showed you? He is. He is. But a lot of you are thinking, yeah, but he's putting that money in that segregated bank account. And that bank account's not paying him anything. If you're thinking that, you're very smart and you're way ahead of the curve because absolutely. Why wouldn't he take that money that was going to the segregated account and put it back into the policy where it's going to earn 4%? Well, right. if he did that, he would make a guaranteed 4%. And I'm only showing you the guarantees, no dividends on top on any of these numbers. You want to see how much money he would now make and get to keep? 749. Folks, all he did is changed who got the money. That's all he did. He, he, he got regimented and that's how he paid off all of his debt. This is exactly the system we use. This is how I got out of debt in 14. This is how you can get out of debt. And by the way, we didn't even talk about death benefit. We never talked about the loans that we're taking from the insurance company that I they mean, never have to be paid back. I'm stopping you, Chris. Stop you're gonna, me. You, you know, I love you, brother, but I'm going to stop you. I get I get into it. I'm sorry. So here, let me, let me cancel huge, this. Stop sharing. That's all right. You're a huge fan fund of knowledge, but I find these sort of shows work great if we can take some of your questions. So you, are you down with that? I am. I'm trying to get back to my, I, I took it off the screen. So you're there good. we go. All right. Sorry. I went long. I I'm so no, used no, to no, doing no. that presentation. 
Yeah, no, your your information is awesome. But if we go too long, then it's, then it's almost like drinking from a fire hose. So All right. Yeah. And I'm out of tea. So let's do a couple of questions here. So Lisa wants to know what happens if you lose your job and no longer have income to make your monthly payment? What happens yeah. to your policy or what, what, what do you do in that case? So that's Lisa. So Lisa, I want you to think about what you said. You said, what happens if I lose my job and I can't make my payment? You're not making payments, you're making deposits. So in your bank, if you lost your job and you were making deposits in your bank, what do you do? You stop making deposits or you reduce the amount of your deposits, right? Mm -hmm. Every one of these plans that we set up, you can reduce your, your deposits by 60%. You got to change your mindset and stop thinking of these as payments. These are deposits. Mm -hmm not payments. Payments are a bill. These are deposits. So you just reduce the amount. And if you can't make any payments, as long as it's not year one, you basically just take a break for a couple months till you get a job. It happens all the time. The plan will keep itself alive through its cash value. And then you'll resume your pay your deposit. You almost got me saying payments. You'll resume your deposits after that. So it's very flexible. You just change okay. your deposit. I got somebody who has a quarantine mask on his face. This is not, <laughs> this is not FDI. Yeah. You should, if, if that's yeah. your concern, you should go and research FDIC and see how the FDIC works and how much money they have to protect your bank accounts. And you will no longer think that this is protected by the whole fledged power or strength of these insurance companies. There's also state insurance for all insurance companies and there's federal protection against insurance companies. It's not called FDIC. It's better, but you need to do some research on the FDIC. I don't mean to be firm with you, but you really got some learning to do about what the FDIC really Adrian, is. Adrian wants to know, how does this figure into the upcoming depression? Same way it figured into the Great Depression, the same reason Walt Disney uh, started Walt Disney World with a loan from his banking policy. Same with JCPenney, same with Sears. Insurance companies do better in depressions, okay? So banks fail in depressions. Insurance companies thrive because they work in Austrian economics. Insurance companies do not use like fractional lending or fractional fiat dollars. They use real dollars, a dollar for a dollar, Austrian economics. So insurance companies do very well in depressionary periods, which is why the wealthy and banks use these companies. Hey, Jess, my life has been watching this whole time and she's posted this question a bunch. So I want to give her an opportunity. I know what she's talking about. What kind of whole life policy are you talking about? 1090? Yeah, so she's talking about the split between base and paid up additions. So you're correct. You watch the YouTube video. We don't build them 1090 because 1090 fails later in the policy years, much later. We build 60, 40, 60 paid up additions, 40% base. But how we actually do them is two different ways. We can get the same numbers you can get with a 1090 policy, the, the same liquidity up front. We structure the plan differently so it's more efficient. Think of a rocket blasting off into space. We keep the booster rockets where they are and we drop them off once we get into as the atmosphere. The 1090 requires too much term insurance on the policy and it's a drag. So the booster rockets actually slow you down later. So Bradley wants to know, is this a universal or variable policy? Neither one. I hate both of them. Variable universal lives or IULs are garbage. They're high fees. Their cost of insurance keep going up. This is a old fashioned whole life, but a very specially designed whole life from a mutually owned insurance company. I have a universal life and a variable universal life. They are garbage and they don't work for this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just telling how it is. I'm beating on Lisa a little bit. No, no penalty at all for taking your money out. None whatsoever. No application, no approval period. You click a button, the money's in your account 36 hours later. But isn't this kind of like what you said earlier about changing your mindset? It's the idea clearly, that, clearly. that you're really giving yourself a loan. That's why we're giving the book away because the book explains all this and everybody oh, should read the book. That's a good one too. What's um, People want to know how do they get in touch with you and how oh. do they the book. So. so easiest way to get in touch with me is just uh, text. Uh, so go to your phone and text three, three, seven, the number is three, three, seven, seven, seven. And, and then just put Chris in there. So text Chris to three, three, seven, 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 and that'll give you my calendar and then just schedule a time to chat with me. So it's Chris to three, three, seven, 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 and it'll pop up my calendar. And that's how you get a hold of me. But you're also doing, you know, we talked about this, you're passionate about teaching this. I love it. So you started something called Money School. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Money School and what's that web address if they wanted to. Sure. Learn. So Money School is probably one of my greatest things I've created to date. And what Money School is, is Money School is a community where I basically get to work with you and everybody else in that community on a weekly basis and a monthly group coaching 
So what Money School is, it's just nothing more than a community. It's a community where people come to learn. I have, I don't even know how many trainings. We have 30, 40 trainings in there now. Plus every month we do a two hour group training where everybody jumps on a group training. I coach I also bring in my mentors. I bring in people like Randy Garn, Chris Rude, anybody in different things. Every month it's different. My mentors come in and teach you. And then anytime that you're part of Money School TV, you can book a call with me and you can get my time or my team's time for anything you want. So it's just a, a community. And the best part about the community, so I'm not trying to sell anything here, but I mean, obviously it's not free, but it's it's a whopping 19 bucks a month or $190 a year. That's what it costs. And that's my wife basically came up with the pricing she wanted want it to be incredibly affordable and it will blow your mind when you see how much value is in there. Talk to other people that are doing it, but here it is money school, slash TV. Actually don't, don't use that one. Give them, give them the link. I'll give you the link. I'll give, give you the, the link here. I'll put the link up real quick. It, I have a shortened link yeah. and you can actually just, uh, there you go. Do you have a shortened link for the book? If you want that? Okay. Yeah, so that's the My School link. And then with this My School, you're actually doing like weekly lives and stuff mm -hmm. in it? Every week we do new we do new trainings, new lives. There's a private Facebook group that's only so, for members. Because what's happening with like all of um, the economy rapidly changing, you got to keep your content really current, right? Yeah, that's what Money School TV was created. It, I created it in March when this whole thing happened because I needed a way to give people relevant financial knowledge, play by play, day by day, so they knew what to do and how to react to what's happening. And right now with this whole like little fake bump in the market, believe me, you better be positioning yourself right. So that's what we do every week. We're doing new trainings that are relevant to what happened the prior week. Hmm. That's really that's really awesome. Um, so is there, let's see, here you go. Here's, here's a good question. Dr. Wu, does this system apply to paying off? Oh, I love it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Dr. Wu, I use this almost exclusively for real estate. Yes, it works absolutely fantastic for paying off rentals or your real estate stuff, because then you take the rental income, you redirect where the rental income goes. Instead of going into a regular bank account, I move that money into these policies and then I pay these off the same way you just saw me, saw me do it for that chiropractor. This works for everything, not just you know, debts, not just cars, but it works for if someone hates paying taxes at the end of the year, I work with a lot of doctors that hate their quarterly tax bills. Well, what if you could get all the money back for every tax bill you're ever going to pay the government? Well, you can just follow this system. It's the same thing. Hmm, that's really, really cool. But yes, it definitely works for that. Yeah. Now, thank you for putting that link up. Yeah. Do you um, have to get your insurance policy from a particular insurance or? Yeah. Yeah. They're very specialized insurance well, number one, the companies, not every company out there does it. For example, most people are like, oh, does Allstate do it? Does Northwestern do it? No and no, they don't work for this because in order for you to have this system work, number one, the company has to agree to be a non-participating whole life insurance company. They have to be agreeing to pay you dividends and interest on the full amount, even when you take money out. And there's not many. So the, we use about four different companies. I mentioned Mass Mutual being one, Lafayette Life, American United Life. On occasion, we'll use Ohio National, but these are very specialized companies, but it's not even even just that the companies are specialized, how we design these, like your, your one, um, I can't remember her name. She said 90, 10. It's how we structure them. A regular insurance agent or advisor will not know how to do this. I promise you, I was one for 14 years, 16 years, actually. And they never taught me this. It requires us or the agent or the advisor to take anywhere from a 60 to a 90% cut in commission. And, and just like life, right? Everything in life is if you give, you get. I have to give my commission so you have access to your money. And that's all That's all there is to it. 60 to 90% less is what we make on each. Yeah. And I've told people before, I went to a talk about four years ago from a guy who was trying to offer exactly what you're talking with this money life uh, policy. And he wanted to charge me 20 grand to, do, to join his system. And how there's much a, there's a ton of people zero. I don't, we don't charge anything. I told you already. We're not, I mean, yeah, money school TV, something different. So am I selling money school TV? Yeah. But I mean, it's just a community. So it's a membership, but the, the, money multiplier stuff that I just showed you. We don't charge anything. We don't charge you for the map. We don't charge you to set your banking system up. We don't tell you how much money to put in. There is no cost. The insurance company charges you $50 per year in a policy servicing fee. And that's mass mutual. That's a fee. That's how much you'll pay the insurance company plus the cost of insurance for the death benefit. But 
We don't, we don't charge you anything. I, the guy you're talking about literally legitimately charges $20,000 to teach you what I just showed you. And he yeah. goes a little deeper, but so do we, we actually have a training platform that's free to every one of our members that starts their banking system with us. That's free. It teaches you everything you'd need to know that yeah. other people charge 20 grand for. That's really cool too. So basically, I mean, you're not charging this $20,000 fee like this yeah. other guy was. Plus you get access to your team and everything. Mm -hmm. And just to, you know, we don't, we, we were trying to teach you concepts, not really trying to sell you on. Not concepts. at all. Not at all. And and even when I do a call with somebody, there was no sales. Never. Literally, if you want to do this and you wanted us to help you do this, you got to ask me. I'm never going to ask for your business. Never once. I never have had to. You're going to, the conversation is going to, I'm going to answer your questions. I'm going to talk to you about the different ways you can do it and what you can use it for. Like, can you use it to pay off your rentals and your real estate investments? Yes. And then after that, there's going to be a weird, awkward silence. If I'm done answering your questions, and I'm going to say, okay, uh, do you have any further questions? And you're going to say, nope, I think you answered them all. I'm great. Calls over. Hey, and it always, it always goes, well, how do I get started? My good friend, Dr. Billy, wants to know if I contact Chris, can he teach me the specifics for me to set this up properly for free? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not charging for it. So I guess maybe I'm not understanding what he means to set this up properly. I'll teach him how to do it. And uh, even if you have a whole life, I'll teach you how to use your existing whole life. It won't work like what I showed because it's not built the right way, but I'll teach you how to do it. And I, I won't charge you for that. So how do we start the banking system with you? You just set up a call. You text Chris to 33777, and that'll give you my calendar. And then you just book a call with me. That's awesome. Text mm -hmm. three. Set Chris to 33777. So yeah, you just go into your texting and you just write in the main thing. You're just going to put 33777. And then in the body, you're just going to put Chris. There you go. And it will send you my calendar. Wow. Just like that. Boom. What about Canada? or other places? Oh, that's a great question. So Canada, it does work. So doctor, it certainly works in Canada. Uh, we basically have affiliate partners that we can connect you with in Canada that do the exact same thing. I did just learn through one of your other people that this is not available in New Zealand or Australia. I'm sorry. I literally spent three hours researching this, trying to figure it out. You guys got some funky things going on with your government and they don't allow this there, but in Canada, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Are there penalties for rolling funds over? What I don't, do you mean 401k or retirement funds? Probably. Uh, you don't want to move, you're never going to take retirement funds and move them into these systems. Retirement funds are qualified funds. This is non qualified, so that you got to draw a line in the sand. I could teach you what to do with your retirement funds, but that's a different topic and you don't want to cross that line. Yeah. So what is your book link? Cause I didn't, I don't have it. Oh yeah. So that's what I was writing up here. It's, it's money school, rei.com slash new book. And that'll get you this book for free. You just pay $9.95 for shipping. And if you're international, I, I did learn that shipping internationally is very expensive. We charge an additional surcharge of 19 bucks. I'm sorry, but literally it cost me 25 to ship to Europe, to ship to New Zealand's like $40. I, I didn't know. I, I <laughs> ate it on that last book. I literally, I spent $115 on one book to ship it to Hungary. And I did it anyway, just out of principle because I didn't right. know. And by the time I got there, I'm like, just send it to her. But I can't do that anymore. And if you want this book, it's the same link. This is the private what, money what guide. If somebody's retired and on social security can they or fixed income, can they do this? They can, but you have to understand this is going to require you to be saving money. This You got to take some of your money that you're, you're making in retirement and some of it's going to have to go to saving. So if you're already saving money, sure, absolutely. Okay. Taxes on the policies or tax, tax free. Things. Yep. If it's properly structured and it's not a MEC, which is a modified endowment contract, which we know how to build them that way, then it is tax free the way that we structure them and use them. Awesome. What yes, about there, medical there is, there absolutely is a medical exam. Yeah. You're going to have to have a nurse come out. She'll be in full riot gear. You know, like you'll think she's there to pick up, he or she's there to pick up uh, ET, but you're going to do a urine sample, a blood draw, some medical questions. And um, yeah, I mean, you do have to qualify for this. This is, you know, if you're not healthy, then this won't work for you. But then what we do is the same thing the bank does. We just borrow a life. So if you've got a child, if you've got a spouse, if you've got someone, a business partner, you basically just borrow their life and they're the insured. You're the owner. All you want is ownership because you want control of the money. Yeah, I, um, I'm part of your money school program. And I think it's fantastic. It's way worse. Than I highly recommend the money school. Uh, with Chris Noggle. I mean, it's so, the information is so unique and 
and up to date and, and you're very interactive. That's a great community. So I highly recommend the money to people for sure. Thank you. And, and I'll give you one promise. It's getting way better. We've got some new things coming out in the next two weeks. Now that the baby's here, I'm going to be ramping up money school TV and it's always going to remain 19 bucks or 190 a year, but we're, get, we're doing so much more stuff in there. I want that to be like the greatest thing anyone can ever do for that price. That's awesome, man. Well, we've been going for an hour and a half. I know. I'm sorry. No, uh, we, and I even said, dude, like, <laughs> that's awesome. No, we love it. We love it. So I'd love to have you back. Maybe go through some of these concepts a little bit slower. Uh, and again, and um, maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, uh, we were supposed to go through that book and maybe next time we can go kind of this book chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Pick one chapter and just kind of walk us through it. Um, but congratulations on the new baby, Viviana, Thank you. a week old or so, right? How many? Uh, six, six days today. Six days old. Get ready to um, get used to telling people how many weeks old they are. <laughs> <laughs> One week on Monday. Yeah. my The friends who don't have kids, always it always dro drives them crazy when you go, she's 32 weeks old. They're like trying to do the math in their head. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations on the new baby. And, Appreciate it. Uh, man, you're awesome, dude. Just, um, so honest and sincere and wanting to help people and, um, giving all your time and, uh, you know, free, you know, that text, um, Chris to three, three, seven, seven, seven gives you on his calendar. He doesn't charge you. You, you don't charge for that, right? No, no. The, the only thing that they can possibly pay for is the money school TV or the shipping for the book. Cause I don't charge for anything. I truly believe if you give your best at, well, Greg Reed taught me that give yeah. your best stuff away for free and you will be wildly successful. And you know what? I subscribe. That's what I do. And I don't need, there's no hidden thing either. Believe me, I assure you, you're not going to get down this rabbit hole. And then all of a sudden be like, well, he said he wasn't going to sell me anything. Now he's selling me something. Never will that happen with me. Yeah. You have to ask to join Chris. If you want to join Chris, he's not going to ask you for business. Absolutely not. I think it's really cool. Now, the last thing I'd like to say, and then I'll let you go. Um, Cause people are commenting, what the fuck does this have to do with your channel? Dr. V. And the answer is we're all going to be freaking hurting here with this new economy, the new depression. Um, so can you recap for people in one minute or less, this new sort of economy that's going to the you can call it depression. Recession. It's going to happen in the next 12 months. And why do people need to get more financially literate? Go ahead. Health and wealth are interconnected. So with what's about to happen, you got to understand businesses are going to close. Life's never going to go back to the way it was. And you're going to need to learn how to take back control of your money and how to do things different than what you've been taught your whole life about how money works. And if you don't, you're going to ride this roller coaster. And if you were in 2008 and nine, you remember what that felt like. This is going to be worse. So health and wealth are interconnected. And I'm just trying to bring you the wealth side of the health. Because if you're well, if you figure the money part out, it will help your health. I assure you. Proven fact. 2008, I was $4 million in debt. And so I'm telling you, man, I know exactly what you're talking about, bro. And if you lose 40%, it takes you 80 to make back the 40 that you lost. So don't try to play that buy and hold game. It will not work. Yeah. People don't realize that if your stocks go down by 50%, you have to actually gain a hundred percent to get it's actually where you were. Yeah. It's actually more, but we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Keep the math simple. Got the fees I and everything else. Happy Memorial day. Yeah. Happy Memorial yeah. day to yeah. you. Go enjoy your baby. And thank you so much for everything you do, brother. My pleasure. Thank you, everybody. I hope this was helpful. I know your cell phone is about to blow up. Your calendar is about to blow up. <laughs> All righty. I'm, I'm ready for it. Talk to you next time. All right, but everybody, how amazing is Chris Noggle? I know that was a lot of information. I know we went for a long time. I'm going to edit this video down as much as possible, put it up on YouTube so you can rewatch it again on YouTube. I'm going to try to have Chris back in a couple of weeks to kind of revisit these ideas. I'd like to have him as a regular contributor, maybe not as long, but um, have him back on as a regular contributor. And because the financial information that he teaches us it's so it's it's not your Susie Orman. It's not. And there's nothing wrong with Susie Orman or Dave Ramsey. If you if you want to live that sort of lifestyle where you are not drinking lattes, you are you know, you are buying used clothes and driving used cars. That's fine. That's that's fine for you. But if you want to get financially smart, if you want to gain control of your money, 
if you really want to understand how the banking system really works and how you can become your own bank. I mean, Chris Noggle is the man to go to. And again, he doesn't sell you. You have to ask if you want to join. You have to ask him if, uh, to accept you. He's never going to ask for your business. He's busier than ever, especially now with a newborn baby. And we are sincerely just here to give you information uh, to, that if, if one little nugget, like one little aha could change your financial life, we're trying to ease the burden of suffering that's going to happen in the next 12 months with the collapse of this market. So with that, <laughs> I will see you next time. I will be back doing more coronavirus videos because as we're opening up the economy now, people are doing saying bullshit stuff, not doing the math right, not doing here on the last note. The coronavirus death rate is not 6%. It's not 4%. It's not 0.00003%. The corona, the accurate coronavirus death rate as it sits today at the end of May, it's 20%. And I will explain that, how it's 20% death rate when I do my next coronavirus video. See you soon. Bye, guys.